Hi guys, it's Kenny Hughes, and you're watching the Chana 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 podcast. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of my podcast. We have a very special guest today joining all the way from South Africa. We got Kenny Hughes joining the podcast. Hi Kenny. How's it going, man? I'm good. How about you? Ah, always good, man. Much better now seeing your face. <laughs> <laughs> so I just saw your Facebook, so you're on tour. So what's happening with the tour? Yeah. How is it going? Well, basically, man, uh, the, the main reason for the tour is because, as you know, I just released 1920 about um, just over a month ago. I'm actually on my way back to Gauteng to go and record another song to release in the, the following couple of weeks. Right. So how is how yeah. is it how how is the situation in South Africa with the you know with the restrictions and stuff? Is it okay now? Is it relaxed now? You know, it's a lot more relaxed than it was last year. This time, of course, um, at least we are able to gig again. Um, speaking from a one-man band perspective, right. but yeah, the the curfew still plays an effect because we still got a curfew, of course. So people still have to leave early, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot more relaxed than it was. At least, at least I can I can get back to work again. So that's right. the important thing. So so mm. ha- after how many like how many months you've been uh, starting to play again, uh, play live? Well, there was a, there was a period last year, starting last year, I'd say probably beginning of November, until almost the end of December, where I uh, my live shows picked up quite a lot. And then uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa made another speech and he closed uh, the beaches and everything down for the uh, basically Christmas and New Year's. And so that affected the tourism a lot. And a lot of the places where I was booked to play canceled the shows again. So then we went through a little bit like probably a month or so where I couldn't play again. And then I could start playing again from about Feb. So it's been about three or four months of, of play now. And um, yeah, we're, we're getting there, you know, we're getting back to where we were, but it's not quite right. where it was just yet. Right. Uh, <laughs> when I saw your picture, like when, when I first got to know you, about you, and then you have like your Kenny H. You remember there's a, there's a guy called Kenny G? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With civil I got to like, tell you how many of my friends. Yeah. <laughs> So many of my friends call me Kenny G. So many of them. Right. I've heard all the jokes, man. I've heard all the jokes there are. <laughs> it's quite funny. Right. Uh, so, so can it, can me, it, Yeah. How are things in the Philippines, man? How's the live music doing in the Philippines? Uh, can you guys actually, jam again? No, sadly, sadly, there's no no shows happening anywhere. We are still we, nothing at the moment, man. Eh? Yeah, we had a, like a very strict lockdown, uh, like last April, it was like sort of fully lockdown. Now, now we are a little bit again relaxed, but the okay. music is not happening and I don't see any sure. of the bands. It's, it's, it's very sad situation, actually. It is, it definitely is. But I mean, it's got to normalize at some point again, you know, at some point it's got to get back. You know, things are constantly changing. The world keeps turning. Yeah, so yeah, at mean, some it, point, it's God is stabilized, you know. Right, right, yeah. So, so can you can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and how did you like got into music? What's your earliest uh, memory of music? Well, my parents have amazing taste in music, right? So they, I grew up listening to guys like Mark Knopfler from Dive Straits and Eric Clapton. I got a lot of Credence Clearwater Revival influences and stuff. So. You know, I listened to really, really good music growing up. And my dad and my uncle are very big fans of these live music concerts that you can watch on DVD, right? So then probably like one of the earliest memories I have is my dad and my uncle were watching a Dire Straits concert. I'm not sure exactly where they were, Mm. Um, but they were playing live in concert. And I ran to my bedroom. I was probably seven or eight years old. I ran to my bedroom and I got my little toy guitar. I had a toy guitar probably this big. <laughs> and I ran back to the room and I started I started playing along to the concerts. And my dad was like, yeah, he's probably going to be a musician. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's basically how it started for me, man. I have I really have my my parents and my family to thank for the amazing taste in music that I got to grow up with. <laughs> right. So so yeah. you you did you study music in school? 
Not really. So I, I had a, a few teachers over the years. And um, the first teacher I had definitely played the biggest role in my, in my guitar playing. And he had, a, he had an approach where he couldn't read music, you know. So he taught you to play. So what he would do is he would give you a, um, a song that you know, like a, quite a popular song with the chords and the lyrics and everything. And he would teach you from day one to, to sing while you play along. You know what I mean? So he, right. from day one, he got you comfortable with that whole process. And so, yeah, that is an amazing way to learn to play, I believe. And no, I, I never studied further in music. I've just been playing ever since. And these lessons have sort of stuck with me this whole time, you know? Right. So, um, how how did you like discover blues how because when i when i he hear you play it seems like you're like a old soul you know <laughs> you know it's mm, uh, mm, so how did you discover the blues uh, you remember how how do you got into blues yeah definitely so um i was always i was always fond of the blues um and whenever i heard a blues song i just i loved it i loved 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 it but for a very big part of my youth, I never knew what blues was called. I never knew that there were different genres and one of these genres was the blues. So every time I heard a blues song, I knew that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to sound like. That's what I wanted to hear. That's what I loved, you know? And um, I'll never forget, there's this movie with, uh, with uh, Samuel L. Jackson called Black Snake Moan. And in Black right. Snake Moan, there's an Aerosmith song that's this proper this dirty slide guitar song, you know? And um, I could finally, I had a reference point. I had a song that I could actually Google. I could search it and I searched it and it fell under the blues genre. And that's when my eyes opened up and I found, I discovered this world of the blues, you know? Right. So yeah, that, that was definitely where it came from. And, and since then, it's just, I can't get enough of it. <laughs> right. Uh, who do you like really follow? Uh with the genre who which artists you're really into okay well um huge um huge influence in my music and my playing is jimmy hendrix uh, always has been um but a couple more recent guys um i'm not sure if you're familiar with a guy called philip sace he's no. a, a canadian canadian oh he is absolutely brilliant and then we've got two local cats that are insane as well uh, mr dan Petlansky and mr albert frost right and um yeah so between the three of those guys i get uh, a lot of my influence and uh, i've years ago i started listening to dan Petlansky and i i knew his songs by heart basically and but it's it's constantly growing you know so i love the black keys as well the black keys um have definitely given a bit more of the blues rock feel to my music Mm. Um, and then, yeah, oddly enough, uh, one of my favorite bands, one of my all-time favorite bands is the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Right. And that gives a bit more of that, that funk element, you know? So, I don't know. It's, it's quite a melting pot of inspirations, you could say. Yeah, I mean, blues has, like, because you can start with, like, Muddy Waters, BB King, and then it can go up to even up to, like, Slash, Aerosmith, because all that exactly. is, there's a lot of blues in between, right? Exactly. Exactly, man. And for me, it's like it's um, everything started with the blues, man. The blues kicked everything off. I, I feel like Robert Johnson is not just the great grandfather of the blues, but he's the great grandfather of rock and roll as well, man. Because everything yeah. comes from that, you know. Everything, even <laughs> pop music, man. Even pop right. music, it all comes from blues, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have you seen the the, the movie Crossroads? <laughs> oh, too many times. Too many times, man. Uh, one thing I like about the you know blues is like you know obviously the storytelling because it's always like there's a story that you say about it's about open road it's about like your feelings and a uh, couple of artists I like in this is uh, you know uh, although he's not a blues artist I like like Johnny Cash how how he how he writes oh, songs yeah. it's Definitely all like a storyteller by nature man right very simple stories yeah. but and very simple words but it's it's very deep uh yeah, i yeah. actually uh, i actually was a, you mentioned eric clapton so i was lucky to see him like in 2014 i was able to see him uh, wow. in singapore yeah i think that was like oh, probably yeah that was his probably last tour probably that uh, he actually came to asia 
So wow, it Yo, was amazing. Man, that's insane, man! Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wish I could have seen him, man. I also right. I also missed Mark Knopfler. Mark Knopfler was was in South Africa, and um, my uncle, that uncle I mentioned, he went to go watch him, and I I missed the show, and I've been kicking myself ever since, man. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Way to make me jealous, dude! Thanks, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, uh, for the last twenty years, the only thing that I did cons like consistently is I go to gigs. I went to so many gigs. I think I've been like thousand gigs That's already. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome, dude! Wow, I can't wait for you to come to one of my gigs, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I actually discovered like South African, you know, like first the metal scene. Only like last 2020, because somehow I got connected with Devo, and then he's the one who actually introduced to me to a lot of these bands. Uh, before that, yes, I didn't definitely. really knew. I didn't knew a lot of bands. So how is this uh, sort of uh, the blues and that sort of uh, scene there? Is it that people accepted that? Uh, how is it? How is the response? Well, man, it, it varies greatly from place to place. Um, greatly, there's uh, I can't even begin to describe. So there are some places where it's extremely welcomed, and the people love it, and the people can't get enough. And um, those are my favorite shows, man. Obviously, for obvious reasons. But I mean, when you're sitting, or when when they're sitting watching you play, you can see that they're actually listening. They're actually part of the show, and then they ask you to keep playing originals. That's the type of show that I love playing, right? And so there's there's a lot of venues that have that. There's a lot of venues that have that that real love for the live music, that real love for the artist, um, and that real support for the talent that goes into it. You know what I mean? But then you get your places as well. Um, like where I'm sitting currently, I'm sitting in a place called Bloemfontein. It's in it's basically right in the middle of South Africa, smack in the middle, and um, yeah, it's a bit difficult. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, yeah, there's not as many venues most of the venues here it's more of the club scene you know it's more electronic music that type of vibe so yeah it, it just depends where you go just depends where you go you know right. cape town yeah cape cape town's a great place for the blues cape town's awesome their people love it yeah right uh what i was so surprised about africa is like when i saw that documentary about this uh, you know that botswana the the cowboys with the, you know the rock cowboys in botswana right mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. i mean it's there's so the many so much big scene there right on those countries that it's not yeah, really uh, it, the rest of the world doesn't know about right <laughs> it's crazy yeah apparently botswana has a booming heavy metal scene man like the metal scene in botswana is massive apparently yeah i was like what <laughs> really <laughs> that's awesome i mean more power to you man keep jamming keep jamming <laughs> right so 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 kenny when did you like really got serious about uh, you know doing music uh, pursuing music you remember like what was your like first first show uh oh first show that's that's quite difficult it's it's quite a good story actually because um that guy that i mentioned to you that was my teacher for a few years way in the beginning mm. well what he did was he he gave lessons in everything basically so he gave um everything obviously but he gave drums bass guitar a little bit of keys and obviously a little bit of singing he, well he built up your confidence to sing and so what he would do because he had he had a lot of students so he would group us all into bands according to our um, according to our skill level, right. and then at the end of the year he would throw a concert. So each band would then play one song each, and all the parents were invited and all family friends and everything. And so my first show was actually uh, probably eight months after I started playing guitar, and also where I had my first solo on stage, and it was wow. extremely <laughs> extremely liberating. But where I started to take it seriously, man, was um, right out of school. I got a job uh, selling insurance, of all things. But I always knew that music was going to be a part of my life. I always knew that I wanted that. But I first, I thought that I had to have something to support that, like a day job so that I could do music by night, you know? Right. And I was selling insurance, and I sold insurance for two years. And every day I went into work, it just it ate a little piece of my soul, man. And a little piece of myself died, and I... I just knew I was never going to get it back and I'm wasting my time here. And so I started teaching guitar. I, I gave guitar lessons for a year. And then that sort of 
scratch that itch, you could say, but it wasn't completely what I wanted. Right. And then I committed and I said, you know, it's, dude, I'm messing around now. Let me stop messing around. Let me do the music thing seriously. And that was about three years ago. Right, right. So, uh, and I, I haven't had a Monday in three years. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, I was listening to your music. Uh, you have a couple of singles in, on uh, Spotify and also in YouTube. So uh, this song, yeah. The Wicked Ways, uh, do you remember writing mm. that song? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Definitely. So I actually wrote that song when I was still part of a band. I used to be part of a, a trio, a blues rock trio. Uh, Blackwood Freighter was our name. Mm. And I wrote all the music. I wrote all the music for the band. And yeah, man, I wanted to, I wanted to write a, I didn't want it to be a love song. You know what I mean? I wanted it to be very relatable. And what is the best thing to write a blue song about? You know, it's either whiskey or it's woman. <laughs> right. So I figured I'd write a song. I'd write a song about a woman, but it wouldn't be necessarily a woman in my life. It would just be a woman that has, you know, that has had some effect on a guy and every guy can sort of relate to that vibe, you know? And yeah, so that's, that's basically what it is, man. Sappy story, but I'm sticking to it. <laughs> right. I think, I mean, I, I get what you mean because uh, also your song Overcome, because when I listen to that Overcome, I can relate to something in my life previously, you know, maybe it's you know, something. So, it's uh, whatever how, how, it is yeah? yeah the challenges that we overcome so it's it's a great song as well the uh, can you tell me about that song also overcome yeah so overcome was when i i just moved out of um it was quite a it was quite a difficult time in the family and my parents moved far away they moved to the cape and while i was still up in joburg and I had to decide from there what I was going to do. Where was I going to go? Was I going to stay in Joburg? Was I going to move to Pretoria? Was I going to go? What was I going to do? And um, I decided that I was going to move to Bloemfontein. I opened for, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with a guy called Jeremy Loops. You know Jeremy Loops? No. Okay. Well, he's a, he's a local guy, but he's, he's reached a certain amount of success yeah. already. And I opened for him here in Bloemfontein. And so I got to Bloemfontein and I saw that there were quite a few opportunities here. There were a few venues here. It's a, it's a student town after all. So there's always going to be a place to drink. And wherever there's a place to drink, there's a place to jam, you know? Right. And so I, I just moved to Bloemfontein and it was, it was sketchy. You know, like I said, it was a difficult time in the family. And I realized that this was just a stepping stone. It was just something that I had to face. I had to deal with it. It was going to be difficult. But I knew that I could overcome it. And that's what I wrote it about, man. Right. And like you so, said, it's relatable in any way, you know, it could be anything. Yeah. It could be a relationship. It could be, like you said, addiction. It could be moving to a new town, man. It could be anything. Yeah. And also, also this, uh, you know, this current situation with COVID, like, you know, the loneliness and all these things that you're. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Don't even get me started. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Kenny, you mentioned about Albert Frost. So, I actually so, sort of saw from your like your profile that he was one of your like favorite artists and he, he was one of your influences. But you actually got to work with him as well, right? On your latest uh, single, I believe. Yeah, definitely. It was so, actually quite cool because we Yeah, yeah, sorry. Carry on, yeah. No, just tell me like a little bit about Albert Frost because a lot of people might not know about him. Oh my goodness, dude. Okay. Um, well, he's regarded as the South African Jimi Hendrix and he plays this very, very psychedelic Afro, what he calls Afro blues. So it's, it's blues, but with an African rhythmic influence. Right. Man, I have seen, I've seen the guy live um, probably four or five times. Really, whenever I can, I try to see him. And it's happened to be four or five times so far. And every time... He just blows my mind, dude. He is, he's ridiculous. If you haven't checked out Albert Frost, please do yourself a favor, man. Just check out some of his stuff. He's incredible. An incredible, incredible guitarist. Yeah. Right. So how, how is it that you, you were able to work with him on your latest single? So you mentioned Wicked Ways. That's on Spotify as well. Well, now I recorded Wicked Ways at a studio here in Bloemfontein uh, called Crooked House Records. And um, in Bloemfontein, there was a festival called Rocking Bloom. 
It was organized by two of my friends, Jody and Maureen. And one of the artists that they got on the bill to play on the lineup was Albert Frost. So he was in Bloemfontein and he had heard about this, this studio, this Crooked House Records. So he wanted to go check them out. And when he went to check them out, he asked them to hear some of the latest stuff that they had been recording or whatever. And they happened to mention my song. They happened to mention that I recorded there and they played in my song. And he liked it so much that he wanted to listen to it again. So he listened to it twice. And then he found out we were going to be playing at the same festival together. And then at this festival, I finally got to meet him. I've been wanting to meet him for years. Finally got to meet him backstage. He called me backstage and he said, listen, man, I'd like to help you produce a song. And I was like, well... Let's do it, man. I'm super keen. Let's go for it. And yeah, about, um, well, I mean, a, a lot of things got in the way, uh, like COVID, for example. And then eventually now in February, I could go up to Gauteng to go record. And then I called him up and yeah, he basically remotely produced it from, he was in the Cape while I was in Joburg. And he just, he gave me all sorts of advice and influence and stuff into the track. Right. So it's like, it's almost like, like the universe is giving what you sort of thought, like <laughs> you're exactly. thinking of, right? Exactly. Like, you... <laughs> Don't you love it when that happens? <laughs> yeah, that's amazing, right? So, so this new single, <laughs> 1920. So I, I was trying to think what is this 1920 means and all that, but can you tell me about that song? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So it's a COVID song. It's, um, it's actually about COVID as well. If you, if you read into the lyrics, um, you, can, you can check that it is indeed. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I wrote it right in the, in the first three weeks of hard lockdown that we had here in South Africa. I wrote the song. And the reason it's called 1920 is because the whole of 2019, for the majority of people I spoke to, 2019 was a bit of a difficult year and everyone was looking forward to 2020. They, they thought there's something around 2020. It sounds like it's just going to be a good year. We're going to have our, we're going to reach all our goals. We're going to do all that stuff we wanted to do. So everyone was looking forward to 2020 and then 2020 came and smacked us with what it smacked us. Right. And um, yeah, so it's basically just that weird time the, the songs about that weird transition from the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020, that sort of felt like the same long sort of, limbo you know like this limbo status that we were in and right. um yeah it's pure covid song man 2019 2020 right so so uh strange times uh, you you earlier you mentioned about your tour and all these performances what are you like you're getting inspiration from the road that you know going to these different places playing with the crowd it's how is that what what are some of your like memorable experiences Oh my goodness, man. There's a lot of them, dude. There's a lot of them. Like there's at every show, there's at least one crazy person that makes the night worth it. You know, <laughs> um, whether it's a, whether it's a quiet show or whether it's a packed house, there's just always each, each show has its own vibe. You know what I mean? Each show has its own feeling. If I think back to any, sp any particular show that I played, it makes me feel a particular way. You know what I mean? Yeah, memorable moments, dude. I don't know. There are there are so many. But I got to say, one of my favorite parts about being on tour, and it's it's quite weird, right? But it's it's not the jam itself. It's not the shows. It's not the crowd. It's nothing. It is me in my car, alone, on the highway, leaving the one gig behind to get to the next gig in the next town. That that feeling, that, that act of actually being on tour as a musician, it, it still gets me, man. It still shakes me a little. It's, right. Yeah, it's awesome. It's just awesome. So how how does the the shows work? So you jam with other people, or you you also do like your one man band kind of setup, or how how does it work? Yeah. So most of the time I play one man band. Um, I haven't I haven't performed with a band for quite a while now. Um, it's just it's easier, especially now after after uh, the lockdown restrictions have been eased a bit. A lot of the venues got so hurt financially. You know what I mean? In right. the time that they couldn't operate. They just, they simply cannot afford to get a full band, a four member band or three member band for the evening. It's just, it just works out too much. So right. as a one man band, it's a lot easier to get shows. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a lot less logistics to get shows. Um, yeah, <laughs> basically. 
yeah i i i have this uh, sort of a fascination about the one man band especially i was i i actually wrote an article few months back about the you know those one man black metal bands that that comes out like all oh, these yeah, yeah 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 so i i interviewed couple of them act also it's it's very interesting how you know how how they create that music you know, like by themselves it's awesome and, it's and they were saying yeah and then there was some some uh, interviews that i i actually got scared talking to some of the artists because they were like going wild like going you know they were talking about so many things it <laughs> <laughs> happens dude it happens some of the yeah. craziest people in life are musicians man some of the craziest people in life right some of the craziest people i've met for sure bro for sure yeah um. <laughs> Uh, so, you get these so, like yeah they're almost like super intellectuals you know some of them like especially this guy that that uh recorded um my latest single 1920 Efforts name and he's one of those guys dude he's literally a genius man he is like you talk to this guy and just in the conversations you have with him you know and then i mean on my track he did he played the drums he played the keys he played the bass and he did backing vocals in that song there's two guys in that song man it's me and ifert you know right. it sounds like a full band dude it's crazy <laughs> so yeah the musicians crazy people sorry uh, i interrupted you man you want you wanted to say something yeah no 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 i mean uh, that, that's fine so uh, so so kenny listening to your songs what i'm really uh, looking forward is when are you going to put out a full length album because you i think you need to put more songs out because i was looking for you know i was searching the internet whether I, what, what can i find <laughs> from you <laughs> awesome man well i mean i i take that as a huge compliment thank you <laughs> but basically my plan is to release a few more singles this year um that's why i'm going up now like i said to kharteng i'm going to go record the next single and possibly two and then by the end of the year if i've released about 5 or 6 then i'll compile them into an ep that i will then release as an as an ep type vibe you know right something like that but full length album yeah i mean if i get a sponsor for it sure <laughs> you know it's quite pricey right. man it's quite pricey mm. yeah. especially maybe, trying to do it alone you know it's quite a film i mean with you know maybe it will happen right just just uh, stay, stay positive so it might it will happen <laughs> definitely Definitely. No, it's going to happen. One way or another it's going to happen, man. One way or another. <laughs> right. No doubt um, about that. Yeah, so uh, as I said I met uh, I met Devo last year uh, through through internet somehow. So how you how long you been okay. working with Devo? Hmm, I suppose it must be uh, ooh, close to a year now, I'm sure. At least close to a year now. And man, he's also a wizard, eh? Yo, that guy Yes, he works hard, dude. And he yeah. gets the shit done. I love it, man. I love it. I love working with I love working with really professional people and Devo definitely is one of them. Yeah. yeah. So it's been about a year now. And I haven't looked back since. I I I feel like I'm going to be working with him for many years to come. Right. So 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 Kenny, uh, what's your message to the viewers of the podcast and also the people who support you? Uh well, watch this space, man. Please don't take your eyes off of it cuz yeah, I I really want to do some cool stuff. And also, I just want to say like to um to any musos out there that are like thinking of giving up because of difficult times, especially in places where they can't jam, please don't give up. Dude. If you've got a if you've got a talent and an ability to play an instrument of any kind, then it is your responsibility to play that instrument. The world needs it. So please don't don't stop just because the world's tough, man. Please. and that's it that's it man right yeah because yesterday i was talking to a band from check 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 republic and uh, we actually talk about this because there there's this notion from the government like oh music is not essential musicians are not essential but what's the point of living if there's nothing to like if there's no art and music right because that's what exactly. you exactly basically live for right so it's uh, exactly it's essential it's really i <laughs> there's no point of just surviving right <laughs> if you feel like entertainment isn't important then take one week take this challenge and take one week where you don't pick up a magazine you don't watch tv you don't mm. listen to a single song you don't nothing no entertainment of any kind whatsoever for one week and tell me how boring your life is 
Yeah. You might as well go to prison, man. You might as well go to prison. Even yeah. they ha- even have weights in prison, bro. <laughs> you need entertainment. <laughs> it's super important. It's super right. important. <clears throat> so, yeah. Kenny, uh, uh, thank you for joining the podcast. I really enjoyed uh, talking to you. Uh, I'm really looking forward yeah, to your, you know, new music. I only, I really love your music. Uh, so keep awesome. uh, creating great music, and then we'll talk again soon uh, when when you have an, you know, more more songs. Uh, so keep for safe sure, on man. the road. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you for right, joining. Dude, thank you so much. I've had an amazing time talking to you, man. I'll talk to you anytime, dude. Let's do this again, please. It was fun. Yeah, thank you, Kenny. And then lastly, tell everyone how they can follow you, uh, how they can listen to your music. Yeah, okay. So um, on Facebook, it's Kenny Use Official for some reason. I don't know who's going to be trying to steal my name. But Kenny Use Official. And then on Instagram, it is Kenny Use underscore artist. And if you check out those two, then yeah, you'll find me. Just look for Kenny Use 1920 on Google and it should take you everywhere you need to go. Right. Okay. So thank, thank, thanks, Kenny. Uh, have a great day ahead. Cheers, Ben. Thanks, man. Thank you.